Welcome to Tom Socks Weekly, presented by Zoom Indoor Cycling. I'm your host, Libby Davidson, and we have a great show for you this week. First, we're going to take a look into our relationship with another in-state Division I program, and after that, we're going to look at how our top hitters are making the transition to summer ball. But first, let's take a look at some of the highlights for the week. Welcome back to the show. Two weeks ago, we talked about our excellent relationship with Davidson College, but this week, we're going to be profiling another school from the A-10 Conference. Over the years, VCU has been very kind to the Tom Sox. Our own Tyler Fannin caught up with some of the VCU standouts to see how their transition from Richmond to Charlottesville has been. They said it's a great atmosphere and it's a great place to play summer baseball and work on some things and just have fun, so. I was excited to come down here in the first place. Since the team's founding in 2015, every Tom Sox roster has included at least one player from Virginia Commonwealth University, or VCU, in Richmond. In the, two, the 2019 team comes with two Rams, pitcher Madison Furman and catcher Josh Simon. For the Virginia and Maryland natives, playing close to home and school is a really important experience. Personally, I didn't want to go out in the middle of nowhere, and Charlottesville seemed like a great place to come. Um, it is only an hour away, so that was big. Yeah, it's really convenient for me because I'm taking summer class at VCU, so I'm able to come up here during the week and then go to class and lift with the guys on campus during the week and then come back up here on the weekends. Like Josh said, only an hour drive, so it's really convenient. But for Madison and Josh, it's more than just being close to school. The Tom Sox put an emphasis on player development that they can use in their future at VCU, while providing the experience needed to stay sharp while not in the season. For my experience, just getting out here on the mound, uh, I didn't get a ton of innings this spring, so really just getting comfortable being back on the mound, throwing all my stuff, and then definitely just playing with the guys up here is a really fun experience and taking that energy back into the fall. 
summer baseball is just not to not fall behind and keep working on little skills offensively and defensively and uh, catching new people on the defensive side. Um, it's going to translate over to catching new people in the fall when we have new guys come in. When it comes to Madison Furman and Josh Simon, convenience and playing time is the most important thing when it comes to summer ball. I'm Tyler Fan and this is Tom Sox Weekly. It's going to be a really fun environment, a really great community to be up here and then especially just playing at this field. It's really cool to be able to play at a high school field up here and still be able to get this many fans. Thank you, Tyler. Other than living with host families for two months out of the summer, one of the biggest transitions that the players have to make is going from metal to wooden bats. Our own Nick Grossman caught up with some of Tom Sox's most productive hitters to see how they're making the equipment work. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I was just testing out one of the wooden bats that your Tom Sox have been using to crush balls this season. I spoke with some of the players today to find out about their experiences with the transition from metal to wooden bats. There's definitely a transition period. You gotta make some adjustments. The sweet spot on the wood bats is probably a little bit smaller. Also, the balance of the bats is probably a little bit different. But uh, I think it's for the best. It helps you purify your swing a little bit, get back to the basics. Well, I've broke a lot of bats so far. I think it's three in the past two weeks. So uh, it's not too bad. You just don't get those um, little knocks you can push through with a metal bat. Um, the transition, it hasn't been that hard of a transition. I swing in the cage all the time when I'm using, like, at school, or even in summer ball when I was in high school, I used wood bat. So it's just like the first couple weeks is a really hard part. And then once you get going, it's all the same. Yeah, so when using a wooden bat, you really have to square a lot of the balls up where you're not going to have very good contact. So I think using one last year kind of taught me, like, it made me really perfect uh, making solid contact. And whenever I got back to school, um, it just made it that much easier to hit the ball solid, basically. I, I think it kind of makes you focus back on the basics and, and kind of purify your swing to make sure you're, you're getting the barrel consistently through the zone. Uh, if not, that's when you start seeing balls off the end of the bat and broken bats and it's just not as consistent as an aluminum bat. Uh, I played in the summer league last year. We used wood bats as well, so I'm a little bit familiar with the uh, adjustment. But there's definitely a learning curve. you got to get used to the weight of it and getting the barrel through the zone, which is a little bit different. I feel like I've uh, improved a lot of my approach at the plate this summer. Just trying to hit um, pitches that I'm able to hit. Um, not chase anything low. I still struggle with that a little bit, but just trying to um, hit the right pitches and uh, help me out. So this is my fourth year of summer ball playing in Woodbat League, so it's not too much of a transition, but there definitely is when you're coming, been using a bat all semester. All season and then uh, coming in using a wood bat. Uh, it's just knowing like the pitches you can swing at. I think it helps, makes you more selective at the play and you're looking for your pitch more and you're not chasing out of the zone as much and getting cheap hits. If you get a hit for wood bat, it's more realistic, I guess. In high school, when we played trial ball and stuff like that, we all used wooden bats. So we hadn't used it in a while, but getting back to the flow, it didn't take too long to get, get used to it again. This transition has proved to be rather successful for the majority of your Tom Sox players as the team is currently leading the VBL in batting with a 312 batting average. They're the only team with a batting average above 300. For Tom Sox Weekly, I'm Nick Grossman. Coming up on Tom Sox Weekly, we have another week, another ACC player on the hot seat. Plus, we're going to take a special look at Florida's own Cal Greenfield. First, let's take a moment to recognize our great sponsor, Zoom Indoor Cycling. Tom Sox Weekly is presented by Zoom Indoor Cycling. Located at 1929 Arlington Boulevard here in Charlottesville, Zoom is the premier spin cycle destination in Central Virginia. Your first class is free and you can sign up online at zoomseville.com. Zoom Indoor Cycling. Clip in, rock out, right on. Welcome back to the show. As the month of June rolls around, we're starting to get to know the players pretty well. But as the players have learned, there's no challenge quite like the hot seat. Our own Dorian Martingale sat down with Wake Forest's Cole McNamee to see what the Georgia native had to say. 
Hi, this is Doria Martingale, and you're watching The Hot Seat, where we ask players on the Tom Sox team burning questions. Is it syrup or syrup? Syrup. Do you pronounce it caramel or caramel? Caramel. What is one weird or funny fact about you? Uh, my dog is related to Barack Obama's dog. What is your favorite pickup line? If I could rearrange the alphabet, I'd put you and I together. But I use several different pickup lines. What is your strongest pet peeve? Oh, uh, I'm probably a little bit too nice sometimes. I'm too hard of a worker. I care too much about people. That's probably my only weaknesses or pet peeves. Are birds real? Yes. Do pigeons have feelings? No, they do not. What is your spirit animal? Uh, spirit animal? Hmm, there's a lot of animals out there that I identify myself as, but probably a lion, because I, he kind of represents so much of the animal kingdom. If one celebrity could play you in a movie, who would it be? I thought about this a lot, but probably Chris Hemsworth. Why, Chris? Uh, very handsome, great physique, good personality, all-around funny guy. What is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? The weirdest thing I've ever eaten? It's probably... Maybe, like, alligator? And this is probably the hardest question, but if one teammate on Tom Sox team could date your sister, who would it be? Probably Christian Linka. Great guy to bring home to mom, fun to be around, awesome personality. If there are any questions that you liked or questions that you would like to see in the next episode of The Hot Seat, let us know in the comments below. Thank you, Doria. The question of the week is, is there ever such a thing as too many tattoos? Florida's own Cal Greenfield doesn't think so. Our own Crawford Humphreys has more. Cal Greenfield has had tattoos for a long time. He got his first when he was 16 and now has his arms and stomach covered. I was probably like 15 or 16 okay. and uh, my mom finally went with me uh, to go get my first because I was too young to go get one by myself. He says the one on his chest has a special meaning to him. And it says, uh, Father stretch my hands and it's just about um, like being as good of a man as your father is. So. But as a Chicago native, he says his city has inspired the one he's most proud of. The, the whole stomach piece means a lot. I'm born and raised in Chicago and um, that's what it's all about. It's kind of like a cityscape covering from top of my chest all the way down to my hips basically. But it's not always Cal's idea. He says a tattoo artist in Jupiter, Florida has inspired some of his favorites. Yeah, sometimes I have a specific idea, but other times I, uh, I go to this guy down in Jupiter, Florida at uh, Ace, the shop is called Aces High, and um, I kind of just give him some ideas and I let him do his thing, I trust him, so um, whatever he draws up, I'm open to getting. That's all the ink we have for this story. For Tom Sox Weekly, I'm Crawford Humphrey. Before we let you go, let's take a look at what the Tom Sox are up to next week. That's all the time we have for this edition of Tom Sox Weekly. Until next time, I'm Libby Davidson and go Tom Sox.